It's always best to study the originals over the reproductions. But don't do it on the show, guys. <laughs> and that's how you can really start to learn how to tell what is real and what is not. Hello, everybody. This is Worst for the Video Blog. I'm Alex, and here is Dave. Hey, Dave. Hey, Alex. And uh, we are here to show you guys some interesting material. Uh, this is fakes and uh, copies and items that you don't want to buy uh, for full price, right? Uh, actually, a lot of fakes on the market uh, at the moment. And in my last video, uh, I asked you uh, if you're interested in just place comments uh, under this video and um, I'm gonna show you some more items, so you place these comments, you show your interest. Uh, that is why I'm here and I asked Dave to show us uh, popular fakes, I mean like common fakes, some of them better made, some of them just like so-so. Uh, but let's hear professional in metal and badge stem. Some items we have here. Uh, could you tell us about these fakes? Sure, we could start. We'll start down here. So this is a this is a fake day fighter clasp in silver. Um, it pretty much a dead giveaway. And a lot of this has to do with seeing the original items and studying the originals. It's it's always best to study the originals over the reproductions because when you know what an original looks like, you'll be able to spot the, the reproduction much easier. So starting with this one, the, the the finish is wrong. It's 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 a low quality, like almost like a like a silver wash that's on. It's very muted. Um, you know, they 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 trying to capture some of some of the white in here. It kind of, I mean, it looks like it. Maybe that could actually be maybe even some type of like build up or something. I'm not quite sure. Um, but again, the finish is not right for that. I don't have, I do have an original here. So this is a real one. It's probably not the best example to compare with that, but this is mm -hmm. a, it's a higher quality nickel plating finish. This is an earlier badge, which because of the, the, the higher silver content in the plating has patinaed very darkly on the outside edges. Um, another thing is, is the base metal on this is also incorrect. It's very easy to see. This would be a zinc base badge with this type of a, a finish that you would see. Usually on the brass base badges, you have a much higher quality finish, which is either like a plating or, or, or some type of a high frosting. Um, on the back side, a lot of guys go on the back sides of these things to tell whether they're real or not. So I chose this one because the setup is very comparable to this one. Yeah. Again, it's not right though. So, it's open. so one of the first things you're gonna see on the back side is this center area. And you can actually see where the machining, when they milled this center area out, you can see these, these circular patterns here. That's usually a good indication of originality. It will show up on fakes on high quality reproductions though, because the, they, can, they can cast these things now and actually they're picking up the damage from the original, it's showing up on the fake. Um, but this is this is a good start for it. So that's something you can look for. Hardware on these two. Again, it's very similar. See this? There's actually a step here. Mm -hmm. and this the barrel hinge is soldered directly to it. And what they did was they took this. It was just a piece of metal tube. They actually soldered it on, and then they took a grinder and cut the center area out that would fit the pin. You not you don't have that on here, so we do look for that that mark here where you could see the grinder that hit it, or the cutter if you will. The catch. These are the little nuances that you just again you just have to learn. So the catch is soldered directly to the back of the badge, um, which we see on the early based ones, or I'm sorry, on the early ones that are tone back based or nickel based, they're, they're generally soldered directly to the back. The difference, the main difference between these two is the way that this is shaped. This is shaped in the way that you're gonna wanna see the catch, this is not. So again, this goes from maker to maker. You have to study, you study the originals and 
when you're doing that, you have to, you, you, you pretty much, you take one specific badge, you know, like a pilot badge, you learn the different makers of that badge. Then you need to learn the construction techniques of each maker for that specific badge. And that's how you start to break this down. Each maker produce, some of them produce their own hardware. Some of them use hardware that they bought probably from a similar source. You just, you have to know what each maker used, the type of finishes they used, their, their, their techniques for constructing these badges, for finishing them. And that's how you can really start to learn how to tell what is real and what is not. It becomes very apparent. The fakes become very apparent when you know what the, the originals look like. It's, it's really that, I say it's that simple, um, but it does take a long time to learn. Yeah, that's true. It's the same like in uh, Edged Weapon Thumb. Yes, yeah. exactly. And if we step on the shield uh, them, can you show us something? So this is this is a type of shield that that fools a lot. Um, this is the small four fake. The four is much smaller than the originals. Um, again, the base material is not right. It's close, but it's not right. The finish is not right. This wool material. This is not a correct backing material that you would see. It's a little denser than, than you would see in a, a kind of a little, it's almost like not quite a wool. Um, it's almost like, a, like more of a modern synthetic material. It looks like, I almost wonder if it would melt if we tried to burn it. Um, the finish over top of it, again, it's, it's, it's just not what you would want to see on an original. And then the backing cover. And this one is quite exp expensive. Uh, this is a Narwick shield, so it cost like around um, how much? So for this, if, if this was a real one in this condition, it'd probably be like 650 to 750. Yeah, 100. 100, sorry. Yeah. 650 to 700. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what about uh, like frozen meat? What about uh, Russian front metal? So actually, this one's kind of interesting. <laughs> because this is such an inexpensive award, usually you don't see these reproduced. But it, it, this mo most likely was never really meant to fool, but it is good enough, so I just kind of threw it in the box. Um, again, base material is wrong. These things were die stamped as well. The ridge around the edge here, this thing is a cast example, so this was cast from an original. But it did not pick up the details that you would see on one of the originals, and I don't have one here to compare with. Um, the paint, close, not quite right. Same with the silver, it's kind of a cheesy silver. Really the dead giveaway on this one is that it's just, it's not die struck. Mm -hmm. The details just aren't there. I mean, it's, it's so, so rounded that it's, it's clearly a cast fake. And those high-end badges, uh, can you tell us about this? Because it's like, how much uh, the price for like uh, those three? I mean, the regular market price. Regular, so for a gold partisan in this condition, yeah, it would be 10,000 plus. Yes, and for those guys? These are typically sitting uh, somewhere between 3,000 and 3,500. And the 100 engagements, when they have all their finish, they're around 20. In this condition, if it was original, it could be somewhere between fourteen and fifteen thousand. Yeah, that's crazy. And uh, sometimes, like guys who uh, produce them, can ask how much for something like. If they they try, that's why they try to get them right. Yeah, they this, they, they they try to get like half price for it, right? Generally, they sell them at a discount, and yeah, it's yeah. it's obvious. But if you know what you're looking at, sometimes deals can be found. Um, this one, this is a Rudolf Saval produced one. These are, these are pretty classic in the collecting world. They've actually become collectible in their own right. So these things are really easy to tell. That type of catch is Rudolf Saval and only Rudolf Saval after the war. There mm -hmm. is no wartime catch like that. So if you see a catch that is literally cut out of one piece of metal with the base and it's turned up like this, it is 100% post-war. Okay, that's good to know, and I think many people appreciate it. <laughs> that's that's it. Deserve like, right? Very easy one. <laughs> yeah, and but they get. But sometimes they can just cut it, right? So uh, and uh, try to sell it as a badge without 
like hook, right? They could, but there's other parts of this that would definitely give it away. The rivets. Um, this is a closer material. This is actually is a zinc. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it, it, the only manufacturers of these these higher grade awards were JFS and Junker for the 75s and 100s. Which is also good to know because uh, you have to learn your material. <laughs> That's right. It has to be like specialist. And if it's just a wrong um, maker, yeah, it's right. game it's, over. It's game over. It's, yeah. it's done. You don't go on any further. And what is the best uh, quality fake on this pad? Definitely the 25 General Salt that's at the top. And do you have something to compare? Uh, <laughs> do you have original one with you? Uh, I do, actually. Oh, let's compare it. And this will be, be interesting. This will be a good comparison. So, what can you tell about those? Okay. So, this is one of the better fakes out on the market. Is this one on the right hand side? This is the original. So, they did a very good job at copying the original. So, the first thing you look at is the number box. It's very close but it's not quite the same. You see, it's a little bit smaller. The numbers are slightly off. And these are the little nuances that you have to pick up on. You pretty much, you have to commit them to memory mm -hmm. or keep a lot of photos on your phone. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, again, I, you know, I keep going back to the finish on these things. This is the type of finish that you're going to want to see on a Gablons maker. This is RK Rudolf Carnath. It's, it's considered one of the Gablons makers. So while this finish here, you try to get it as close as they can, it's not the same. This, this type of silver is very distinct. Mm -hmm. The darkening on the eagle, it's, it's almost like a, it's like a not, it's not a paint like you see on this one. It's almost like a, like a bluing yeah. type. Not quite a bluing. It's, um, it's almost like it's baked on there. A lot of guys, they go straight to the back sides on these. And what you can see... Mm, they did a great job. It's, clo it's, it's close. They try, to, they try to mimic this crimped hardware. Mm -hmm. They have the maker mark in the same spot. They have the rivets in the same spot. They even try to mimic the crimped catch. Yeah. But we still can do, can see difference. We can. Because it's like impossible to make it like exactly the same. So if you can, if you can get in on the pins, the shapes of the pins from the original to the fake, you can see that you have a very distinct pattern here on where this thing mm -hmm. tapers out. And it's not here on the same side. These yeah. tapers are not identical on each side of the original. They try to taper this, but it's not. It's not quite right. Yeah. Down here on the catch, let me get the pins out of the way. This is a really good point here. So one of the things that I look at on these is I always go to the side of the catch. A lot of times you're going to see when they bend these things, the metal, you see these little tiny marks mm -hmm. that are on the side. Yeah. And I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera or not. I'm trying to catch it. Yeah, here we there go. They are. Yeah, we can see it. So, and this is just a theory of mine. I think that a lot of these, like this style catches, because these catches were, they were put in place with an anti-rotation device to keep them from spinning, and then they were crimped. But I think that they, they, they probably started, they were either on a roll of, uh, just a roll of, of, of metal that's already kind of drawn to the thickness that the catch would be, so those marks really come from, if that is the case, it's all that is, it's just they ran some type of a, like a grinder or a filing tool down the side of it to get rid of the sharp edges. And that's what those marks are. They're really tooling marks. It's just a theory that I, ha that I have. Is I, I've, I've never seen photos of them putting this particular badge together. But um, if, you, if you know how kind of mass production works in a way it's you're going to have a guy that's going to sit there he's going to pull off what he needs um he's going to cut it and form it and pop it into place and move on so this it's not like each little catch was was 
individually stamped out. And this interesting uh, watermark, it's an interesting example of watermark, and we don't gonna uh, tell all uh, this watermark uh, about all these items because um, somebody can also watch us <laughs> and learn. Yeah. Uh, but I think, in my opinion, it's better to um, teach uh, collectors um, than just hide uh, these secrets and watermarks and secrets. You oh, know what definitely. I mean? Uh, they also specialists and they produce their, their fakes like uh, better and better, but if we just show these differences, like well, yeah. we can be like. There are some secrets that yeah, yeah, we don't want out because if they correct them, it could be bad. <laughs> so, no, we, we could we could show some things, but not everything. And uh, can you show us some cases? So this is one of the most common Luftwaffe reprodu reproduced cases that you'll find out on the market, and this is a lattice fake. And to those who don't know it. It does fool many. And really, it's exactly in its name. It's, it is a lattice pattern that you will see on the covering. Um, and, and, and that is bad. Uh, right. and this is pretty much what an original case is going to look like. There are different patterns of coverings that they do use for these boxes. This is an original type. Um, but when you get inside, you can actually see on the fake that they do use a pretty decent uh, insert. It has like a velvet, has a velvet covering. It's actually, it's, it's kind of nice. It's, it's, it's a decent case to put a real badge in because it's going to protect it well. But you don't going to pay like real money for, you don't want to for pay, this one. No, you don't yeah. want to pay good money for so this. It's one. also a good point because uh, not everybody th think that cases also is a target for fake makers. Oh, they abs absolutely. You yeah. get into pilot observer cases or glider pilot cases or, I mean, the cases can be quite substantial. Yeah. Also, people ask us to show some simple stuff, like affordable stuff. Uh, and uh, sometimes people just don't think uh, there are like fakes of it because it's like not too expensive, but uh, we can see it exists. So I got a... I got a crim shield, a Cuban shield, a general assault badge, and an infantry assault badge. Backing, again, is it's, it's not the right type of wool that you're going to want to see on the back. They actually did a fairly decent job with this one with trying to get it close to a, like a mid to late war example. Um, the, the design is not right, and the backing material is wrong. Wrong type, wrong color. This is a really easy fake Cuban shield. You can just tell that the finish is wrong. Mm -hmm. The design of the eagle is wrong. <laughs> and how much do you want for a real one? For a real one? Like, I, I think they're three fifty, four hundred dollars now yeah. when they're really nice. And for this one, maybe like a couple hundred, right? Probably. Oh, yeah. You or could like one fifty. You'll see them for one fifty, one seventy five, yeah. and yeah. you'll think you're getting a deal. Oh yeah. <laughs> so um this one like Except finishing, because uh, it could be like a uh, mimic cleaned one. No, and that, that's actually a good point, because you, you can find badges that have been cleaned and they do not look the way that they should. So that no, that's, that's a good point you brought up. Um, again, it goes back to the die. So the eagle's head on this one, if you can get in on it, yeah, it's nothing, it's nothing like one of the known examples. So you can kind of just... Pass on from it right from that. Okay, just remember the head of the eagle. There's other things other than just the head of the eagle. It goes down to, there's a lot of details that you have to pick up on. Um, so a good friend of mine runs a, a publishing company that, that deals with a lot of books geared towards metals. Um, they are the absolute best reference books out on the market for them. Uh, the company is called B&D Publishing. It's a friend of mine, Dietrich Meritz, that runs it. And... It's actually cost like a couple hundred bucks or like several hundred bucks, but you can save much more uh, if you just get one and use oh, it properly. Absolutely. No, absolutely. It's, um, I tell everybody you should invest in knowledge before you invest in the items if you don't know. Yeah, that's true. Or you can find like right uh, dealer who can like, who already invested in it, right? <laughs> you can. Like us. If you, if you know them <laughs> yeah. and they yeah, want to do yeah. that. So earlier when we were talking and we were discussing about where, this is a sample of some of the books that I use. 
Um, this is B&D Publishing. Um, again, this is, this is a small sample of some of the, the books that they offer for sale. Uh, so you got Flak Badges, the Kriegsmarine Awards. This is actually is a two-volume set, but for space, I kept the other volume out. The Spang for the second class, the second class Iron Cross, and then the two-volume Knight's Cross book that Dietrich did. Um, Dietrich, Dietrich kind of started this whole thing back when he first came out with the Knight's Cross book, and the way that, that, that he approached the topic really changed the way that these books were done before they were really glorified picture books. Um, but now they're actually, it's a very comprehensive uh yeah, and you can see all difference in one page, and uh, that's so like watermarks. He also highlighted, right? So and uh, right, this, and this book is, is really is, is really interesting for me. I have this one. I have a copy uh, because of uh, some um, extra material is here, not just for collectors and uh, just for like comparing, but some extra material about the pages and story. Uh, also right. added here. It goes into the award criteria and the documents and, and you know, if they have cases with them. It's it's really an all they're all encompassing books. This is the Panzer Assault Badge book I was talking about. This is the two volume set and it's just on Panzer badges. Um Philip the Bach, a good oh, friend of mine. Signed for you. Yes. <laughs> That's cool. But this is what I keep going back to about the makers, and you have to know. So like for instance, this is a very well-known maker. This is Junker. This is the early nickel silver. And this is version 1.1.2B. So when you turn the page, now you have 1.1.3. So it's well classified. And, and it's, again, Junker. We flip further. Now we're into Carl Worcester. And every single one, well, most of these, they have their own, they have their own designs. A lot of them use their own hardware, like hinge and catch, their own finishes. And these books are a really good start to, to learn that. Um, another good author is, is Thomas Durant. He wrote the Close Combat Class book and the book on the Luftwaffe and Hair Paratrooper badges. Uh, these, these are the best books out here on their, on their own topics. Um, there do, you is, know, do you know them in person? I do. And uh, how long they like been collecting and uh, like studying material? I mean, like I would imagine Thomas has been into this for twenty plus years, maybe thirty years. I don't want to say too much more. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to make, <laughs> make him out like he's an old guy. But you know, Tom Thomas is he's he's a younger guy like me. He's a little older than I am, but um, but you know, age has nothing to do with experience. Um, yeah. Again, it's just it's just like like Dietrich and all the other authors from B&D. And I, I, I published one catalog. I know how much work uh, behind every page uh, here. And it's like, it's really tough. It's really hard. Um, and those catalogs are actually much more, how to say it, like informative than mine. So I just yeah. published pictures. There's, uh, yeah. there's an incredible amount of work that goes into these. I mean, you can, you can see all the detailed photos, it takes time yeah. to take these photos and put this information together. Um, yeah, that's really cool and huge respect for these guys. And then another friend of mine who, who's written fantastic books is Sebastian Talbot. Uh, Sebastian's out of Canada. He put together the, the you know the most comprehensive volumes for the uh, the pilot badge and and pilot observer badge. Uh, he just released the the radio operator and air gunner badge book. That's new one, right? This is the new one. This one just came out a few months ago. Um, and you guys just can Google uh, like name of the book and uh, find it because you still can find it uh, on retail, right? Yes. The, I think the only one, so, so Philip DeBach, you're going to have to contact him directly if there's a problem and they want to find the book. Mm -hmm. um, you can send them to me and I can put them in contact with Philip okay. if they can't find him. The Luftwaffe Heron Paratrooper Badge book. This is out of print at this point. This, this is actually a tough book to find. This one, I believe, is still around. B&D still has copies of theirs. These books are all done by a friend of mine who owns the, the business. It's called B&D Publishing. He doesn't author all of them, but he offers all of these books underneath of his business. Uh, it's Dietrich Meritz. Again, it's B&D Publishing. 
So this is just a few of the books that they offer. Um, I think he has a little over a dozen or, or closer to two dozen different types of books on their various topics. And what insight? Uh, let's show people like books and uh, there are like extra material here. Uh, for example, like <clears throat> extra documents and uh, how it has been adopted. Yeah. And uh, so this is the Knight's Cross book that Dietrich did. Um, this is a the, comparing of uh, different silver marks. Dietrich goes into all the different, I mean, all the different variations and many different ways to be able to compare these. Like, for instance, this is the Junker Knight's Cross. So you can see the different cores on the cross for the different types. So you have an early zinc core with the first core. Early zinc, 800 mark Junker, L12, <clears throat> and a later Lazy 2. Yeah. And it's important to see, and it's important to compare because it's like uh, kind of expensive crosses, right? It's like more than 10,000 bucks per each. Yes, these are. So that is why. And some more additional information, right? It goes into the company's history. Yeah. And that's something that you do need to know. You need to know about the history of the makers because it's sometimes that's, that's what you have to know to put together the originality of a piece or, or possibly something we haven't seen before. Um, and just because we haven't seen it doesn't mean that it's fake. So again, it all goes, it goes back to, you have to know what that company did, what they were doing at the time. Um, you know, Junker is, is a really good example for that. The company got bombed in late 1944. So the dyes were destroyed. We knew they weren't making anything else. So it's, it's those timelines, how we can piece things together on certain things. Um, that's but Dietrich great. explains a lot of that in his books. That's great. And a couple more other things. Uh, this is an infantry and uh, general assault badge. Uh, can you also roughly say what point uh, can say that it's wrong one? So this is another good fake. They're trying to copy the, the Schickler design, uh, which would be an early type badge made out of brass with a better silver finish on it. Um, this one actually is made out of brass. And they, they did a very good job with the finish on this one. And the head is pretty close, but it's not, it's just not, it's mm -hmm. not quite there. Um, and on the back side, the hardware is fake hardware. Yeah. These are the types of badges that they're coming out with, the reproductions. They're getting better. The strike is not deep enough, too. I wish I had an original in here I could show you to compare with. On the originals, the depth of the strike is a little bit, it's, it's, it's deeper than this. It's more pronounced on the backside. Um, they did a good job on the catch. It's, it's, it's very close to what you're going to see on an original. But again, it's not right. And with Infantry 1, uh, I see the color is wrong, but uh, what else with uh, like metal? So it is, it's the wrong base metal. This thing might actually be made out of out of lead, and it is. So this is another easy one. I mean, if you can bend them like that in your hands, uh -huh. it's okay. not good. Yeah, <laughs> but don't originals don't, well bend, yeah, but, but not don't, like don't that. Do, but don't do it in the show, guys. <laughs> no, don't do that in the show. Yeah. Um, you can just tell that this thing's made out of a really, really poor metal. Mm -hmm. It's too thin. Um, they did cast this out of an original, but yeah. You so can... this one, this fake is simple, I see, right? This is a simple fake. Yeah. So it was amazing tutorial. They thank you very much for your time and uh, for your knowledge that you sh share uh, for our subscribers and uh, some of these uh, things I didn't know uh, because my point of uh, interest like in my um, main focus uh, on the edged weapons and I can tell you like difference uh, between fakes and uh, original items uh, in that term but with medals and badges uh, this term is like quite bigger uh, because it's like more uh, material exists on the market and more fakes exists on the uh, market so that is why it's so uh, important to learn fakes and learn uh, originals thank you again Dave thank 
thank you guys for watching this video until the end. And if you're interested in like continue, if you're interested in uh, more information, please ask us uh, under the video in comment section. Uh, and don't forget to press like and subscribe button, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, and don't hesitate to show us your items uh, if you have something like for sale or if you have something uh, for trade don't hesitate to show us uh, material because we are always interested in uh, like deals and we are here for you so have a good one and see you real soon